This is going to be a video response for a radio TV phono nut on his Motorola radio. This radio I purchased for $12 and all it really needed was to be cleaned. It was horribly disgusting. This is a Motorola model 5P 33EW from about 1955 battery and AC powered uh, radio with the uh, roto tenor roto tenna handle I believe is what it was called what I had to do is clean this uh, this like leatherette material with 409 it was pretty black and these corners were chipped up and I was actually able to find paint that was the same color and I touched up the chips on the corners in the uh, in the Tolex or whatever you want to call this material I love the eyeball tuner it's really 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 art deco in nature the chrome the Motorola badge really sharp The back of the radio, the only thing that was really wrong with it is they had duct taped the power cord to the radio because it was worn and it damaged the material a little bit there. And there were a few chips. So after cleaning it I just decided to paint the Tolex with Sharpie and it soaked in. And then after I was all done I sealed it with a coat of lacquer. To to make it nice and smooth, it's easy to keep clean, and will preserve it. Even the brass hardware is in really nice condition on this set. The AC plug is very similar to a modern one, but the spacing is just a little bit different. So what I had done is I took a modern cord and I heated it up in hot water to soften the rubber and then was able to force it onto the onto the pins and left it on there and once it cooled down it the memory of the rubber final material kept it stretched so now it, it plugs in pretty easy modern power cord I demonstrated this in another video demonstrating an AM transmitter uh, Hillow had a terrific game against UCLA here on Thursday Prather now tries to go inside down on his knees Cavanaugh makes the steal and gets it ahead to Smith here comes St. Smith Break down the lane, kick left corner, Pierre for three. It's off the back rim, no good. Kevin on the offensive rebound, knocks out of his hands, he recovers and gets it out to Sanford. Drives into the middle of the lane, it's stripped by Wolbekin, but a foul call. Uh, Sanford made the penetration. Wolbekin hit him on the way up. And Sanford will get a couple of free throws with a chance to give Dayton the lead. Gary Cohen will Purdue here in our Subway courtside seats in Memphis. Introducing the new crispy, cheesy flat pizza from Subway. Now get two for five dollars. Subway, eat fresh. Somebody from Florida needs to put a body on Davidoff. He's done a nice job of rooting in there, throwing some bodies around, and picking up two offensive rebounds here early for the Dayton Flyers. Patrick Young, Michael Frazier both come back in for Florida. And in as well as Devon Walker, 6'6 sophomore from Winter Haven, Florida. You can hear in the voice it's got great tone. It's a really good sounding radio. This rotates for reception. There's a ferrite rod antenna located inside the handle. The inside of the radio surprisingly was in real good shape too. 
And again, all I did is cleaned it up. It's running on all original capacitors. It's the inside label, which is actually in excellent condition. It shows the roto antenna. Turn for best reception. Antenna is contained in the handle. Equipped with Motorola's exclusive placer plated circuit chassis. Now this takes a 90 volt battery and I believe, let's see, it actually says in there, 90 volt B battery, 7.5 volt A battery. So I may consider having Battery Maker make me batteries for this thing because this is a neat radio that I could actually take around. One weird detail is it looks like the one tube is mounted on top of a Celerium rectifier. So that must be like a rectifier tube combination. It's really odd. Radio Phono Planet said that this radio is extremely difficult to disassemble. I didn't disassemble this or do anything to the inside in any way. This is how clean it was. In fact, I didn't even spray the volume control. Golden Voice speaker. And of course the little hose that protects the chain is cracked, just like they all do in the one spot. They got an interesting interlock design with these which is simply the fact that when the case is open you can't plug in the power cord. The AC-DC switch is located right there and in order to switch from AC to DC you plug the power cords end into these two slots and it pushes the AC-DC switch over so that you can run it on battery without having it back feed and try to charge the batteries. Ouch. I just got my finger. Kind of hard doing this stuff with one hand. But there it is. Twelve bucks. I got this we do have one antique mall store in the city that actually sells stuff for charity and takes donations and has a lot of junk. But I found this and like I said it was it was dirty. I mean very dirty. A lot of scrubbing went into cleaning this up, this uh, material. But the chrome was perfect. It was just a little bit of pitting underneath the M, the Motorola logo, but the rest of it was, was absolutely fine. So there it is, 1950s Motorola model SP33EW, battery portable radio.